demographic characteristics are projected to create impacts on how we grow. And Utah County is a little bit unique and different than you know looking at the state as a whole. Um, but we'll get into that. And it's, it's thinking about age and fertility, some of those things that impact what our population looks like. And then we're becoming more racially and ethnically diverse, and that's uh, projected to continue into the future. So we're going to look back real quick. This is looking at our region. Um, you're not going to see the coastal states, but intermountain kind of region. And you can see, you know, our economies. When, if we're 1950, 1960, we had a lot of states that were reliant on maybe one econ or one industry, um, one big thing, and it was kind of slow growing out here, right? You get to 1960, 1970, you see some of those lines start to converge and, and do different things. Um, we have things like the interstate system gets everybody connected a little bit better so people can come out here. Uh, you have air conditioning come online. You can see Arizona's line takes a different trajectory, whereas you probably couldn't have, can't be living in Arizona without air conditioning. Um, and then you can see, we're. I'll make a note, um, as a University of Utah person, most of the Utah representations on these charts will be red. So sorry, I know I'm in a different, <laughs> different territory. I tried to highlight a couple things in blue, but um, we're gonna be red on the charts. So you can see we're in the middle of the pack here. And in 1990, our line starts to tick up quite a bit. And that is largely due to migration um, becoming a more constant um, component of our growth. And in part, that's due to international migration. There was a lot of movement internationally. We also got a lot of domestic moving because um, our economy changed. We're a lot more diverse, you know, kind of 80s, 90s than we were um, in the previous decades. And we've become increasingly diverse um, economically moving into the present, um, which has brought a lot of people here. Um, this is just a look at the decadal changes. So uh, Nevada is in the gray, we're the red, and then the US is blue here. But you can see, you know, if you have a smaller starting point, it's easy to grow with a massive percent change, right? Last decade, we were the fastest growing state in the nation, or yeah, between 2010 and 2020, we were the fastest growing state. And you might have seen that headline, woohoo, it's so exciting. We love being number one in Utah. But it was actually the second slowest growth rate in US history, in part because of um, COVID kind of like put a stop to all kinds of movement of people. But we also see the aging population, the impacts of that. Um, so increasing deaths, uh, you know, when you keep aging up, there's a point of finality. Um, we see decreasing births. And so those two things kind of have muted growth. But then in Utah um, specifically, we continue to see migration throughout last decade that really helped us be, be number one. So. Looking at recent trends, these are the Census Bureau estimates, and we might see something from them again um, in the next presentation, but um, the Census Bureau estimates show our growth really moderating quite a bit in the past couple of years. So they put these out every year. There's an annual update. Um, there's a county-level insight that comes out in March and a city-level insight that comes out in May. So if those things are interesting to you, know that those releases come out every year and um, always a fun time. Um, and so some of those broad things that we can see in the, <laughs> the kind of wild ride we've been on for the past four years, data-wise and people-wise, everything going on, um, we had really high deaths because of COVID, which made a big impact on our growth. Um, those first couple years of this decade, that international migration basically kind of came to a halt because um, people couldn't go anywhere. So then we've seen that start to open up again um, now in 2023, um, the state level estimates the Census Bureau was proclaiming we're back to pre-pandemic norms. So hopefully we get a little more stability in what we're looking at population wise so we can think about moving into the future. Um, I will say we're trying to work on a 10 year population projection right now and dealing with like the past three or four years of data that are just kind of all over the place is proving to be a real fun um, exercise. So. One of the things that we've started to note, so I don't know if you've, if you've seen um, Natalie Gochner, our director, present lately, but this kind of concept of the new Utah, and one of those concepts is we've, we've bumped up to a mid-sized state. We're no longer one of the little guys. We're like right at the bottom of the middle tier. Uh, and so you can see this is just highlighting um, the 2023 estimates. 20 states had smaller populations than us, um, and that's something that's a little bit new. So with that kind of 
middle tier, we're mid-sized state, we also have some new fun challenges, um, maybe some fun pinch points um, in dealing with that growth, but just something to consider um, how we fit into that national picture. Thinking about within the state, um, most Utahns live along the Wasatch Front. So we're all in Weber, Davis, um, Salt Lake, or Utah County. One in five Utahns are living in Utah County. So you all are making a big impact down here. Um, and you can, I mean, I know this is a very boring map, I apologize, but it's just to kind of highlight that density of population um, along those four counties. If you think about Cache County and Washington County, that adds another 10%. So that's like 85% of Utahns are living in six of our 29 counties. Um, so the issues that we're facing up here um, are a lot different than what's going on throughout the rest of the state. Just a quick look into our um, increasing racial and ethnic diversity. If we look back to 1990, when we had that kind of beginning of our uptick in migration, um, around 9.5% of Utahns identified as a race or ethnicity other than non-Hispanic white. Now, in the 2022 estimates from the Census Bureau, we're up to almost one in four. And so that um, there's a lot of just things to consider there. I'm not going to get into all of it, but just to remind you that, you know, Utah, with that growth and change, where, who Utahns are, that picture of a, a Utah is changing as well. Um, part of that is younger Utahns are more racially and ethnically diverse than older residents. And so as those younger Utahns age up, if they are able to stay in Utah, if they want to stay in Utah, if they create their own families, it just creates a more racially and ethnically diverse state. So this is presenting median age um, by the selected groups that the Census Bureau uses. And you can see that white alone population, that Asian alone population being quite a bit older um, than groups like the multiracial group, the median age is like 21 instead of 33. So younger Utahns, as they're coming into the workforce, um, might be a little bit different than um, the Utahns of previous generations. Another thing to consider is our foreign-born population. So we do get international um, migration coming to the state. Um, and the, the, the dynamics of where people are coming from is different as well. So in that kind of 1990 and 2000 um, time frame, Latin America, and particularly Mexico, was huge for our international migration. And you can see that kind of shrinking back quite a bit since people entering 2010 or um, since 2010. And that Asian share of the population entering since 2010 increasing quite a bit. So just another reminder that people in the state are changing and these populations are pretty dynamic. So our growth, as I mentioned, that migration um, is the gray area on here and it's pretty jaggedy and wild. And you can see, if you think about um, some big economic things like the 80s, there were some pretty rough years for a bit. That's the last time we had a big out migration um, in Utah. So since 1990, I think Natalie has a slide that's like 34 of the last 36 years we've had in migration. Um, you see a little pause during the Great Recession, so 2008, 2009, people weren't really moving around. But that's kind of new um, to Utah where we can rely on this as a little bit more stable, even though it's kind of all over the place. We're not going to be dependent on if something happens to Geneva or a big plant or a mine, like that's completely shutting down the whole state population picture. So in Utah County, here's the same thing. That dotted red line is natural increase. So that's births minus deaths. And that's what I think most people think of when they think of growing Utah. It's all our babies. It's all our little kids. And that's still something we rely on. But you can see it started to tick down starting around 2008, 2009. And it's kind of started to pop back up, but it's not like a skyrocket back up. So it's something we're watching. The past two years, birth numbers have gone up a teeny tiny bit. Um, and we're dealing with higher deaths, too, um, because of COVID. So migration, even, and I will, I'll add a little footnote here. These are from our Utah Population Estimate Committee. Um, they're a little different than the Census Bureau picture, um, which has more muted migration throughout the state. Um, and I don't believe in their estimates, they put migration as the primary driver uh, of growth. So maybe I can get your notes on how you feel about uh, the changing community. Um, and I can take that back to the office with me. 
So migration, I want to highlight this cool piece that we did <laughs> um, last year, and it gets into the different regions and county level data, um, but provides an insight of who all these movers are. Um, this is pre-COVID, so I'll throw that out. Picture might look a little different, but we didn't have a good data set yet when we were putting this together to look at post-COVID. Um, but you can see, obviously, Southern California, a lot of Southern Californians coming to us, um, kind of Vegas area, Seattle area, um, interestingly, had a lot of people coming here. But just, just so you know, this is a really cool resource to go and check out. Um, I've pulled another couple of figures, but go and, go and have a look and let me know if this is helpful to you because we want to keep building on this and provide these kind of community level at the county because that's the most reliable set of data, but community level insights. You can also see um, Salt Lake and Utah counties are where people are moving. Um, there's a lot of job growth. There's great economic opportunities. There's also a lot of higher educational opportunities that are big drivers for um, mobile young adults. So bringing people here. Um, this is looking at the people moving into each county. Um, some of our figures might be a little convoluted, so also let me know that. But um, you can see that in Salt Lake and Utah County, most of the movers coming in are not Utahns moving around. They're coming from other states or um, from abroad. Part of that could be the LDS missionary population, so I want to put that little asterisk too, um, because they count as abroad movers. If you were gone the past 12 months, um, you look like a mover in the data. So there's that little caveat, but have a lot of new people coming into the region. And then one more, just because, you know, who doesn't love more charts? Um, but showing, you can see the, the width of the arrow is showing kind of the number of people. And so you can see that international component being really big for Salt Lake and Utah County. Also, uh, Maricopa County, Arizona being big for you guys here. And then um, a pretty strong connection between Salt Lake and Utah County of people moving between the two areas. So even though it's a smaller share of all of the movers, um, there's a lot of kind of back and forth between the counties. So if we want to look at that other line, that red dotted line, the births minus the deaths, we've had some changes um, in the past decade, really 15 years. And this is just a way to look at the whole US, but everywhere has seen declines in their total fertility rate. Um, out here, it was a little higher, and in part because of places like us where ours was really high and went, has decreased quite a bit. This is just looking at the births overall, and so I apologize, it doesn't have that recent little, little tiny uptick at the end, um, but there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, there's a lot of literature out there about this topic, so I'll just say there's a lot you can look into if you're really interested in these in declining births. However, since this has been such a like strong piece of our population growth over time, this is making an impact on especially that balance between migration and um, natural increase. And then this is just, this is a pretty in the weeds one from one of our technical researchers, but life expectancy between Utah and the US are getting closer together. Um, we have typically been, you know, we're the youngest state in the nation, woohoo, cool, we're number one again. Um, and we have pretty good life expectancy, but, um, and, you know, healthy, healthy people, healthy lifestyles, people living longer, but those, those differences are getting a little bit closer. And so it's just something to consider um, thinking about how we continue to grow and change. Um, this is just a big metric of median age. Um, so we're aging. Nationally, the, the whole conversation around this started, you know, 15 years ago when baby boomers first started kind of getting into the um, retirement ages. But baby boomers make a massive impact on our national age structure. And so that's really what's driving um, the aging of the population. And that changes what communities need too, right? Like we're not all just a bunch of young families anymore. We've got some different dynamics going on and the needs of the community are a little different. And this is just highlighting our median age at the county level. You can see you all in Utah County are a little bit different than other parts of the state. You're much younger. Um, so that's one of those factors of the demographic characteristics being a little different. Um, I don't have the birth numbers like on hand, but I think your births are a little bit more prominent than in places like Salt Lake County. And you can see kind of the more rural parts of the state are a lot older. Um, they're not having kids as much because people, the young people are moving out for jobs or um, school and then maybe can't come back as easily because there aren't as many jobs available. They're moving to our urban counties. 
So this is kind of that summary slide I was telling you about of, of the new Utah. So we're hitting that mid-sized state um, point. Um, the migration impact is much more significant now than it had been in the past. Um, we're more multicultural, so there's more racial and ethnic diversity. And you know, as you see with that international migration um, factor, we're, we're getting a, a lot more um, people of different backgrounds in the state than we had in the past. And then we're older, and yeah. I kind of grayed out the bottom two, even though those are probably the most relevant and exciting to you, because I'm not an economist. Um, but the strong economy turning into an elite economy, our, our low unemployment, our continued diversification of industries, our continued job growth are things that are attracting people here and continuing the growth. Um, I know that the growth of population can be pretty difficult to deal with in, you know, especially in kind of that housing realm. Um, but at least we're not shrinking. There are parts of the U.S. that are shrinking. I didn't really get into that with that Census Bureau map. Um, but states in the Midwest and kind of up in the Northeast are experiencing population declines. Um, this is me editorializing. I think growth is a better option than the decline option. Um, you don't have to you know, be cutting services. You don't have to be telling people you can't do things. Um, you can keep most of your potholes somewhat filled, you know, those issues are, are different for us here and I'm not trying to minimize them, but we're definitely in a little bit better place than if our population was declining. So looking forward, these are our long-term planning projections and I, I will give the note that with the new data we've gotten that kind of is doing this all over, this is already a teeny bit out of date. We update these every four years um, in part because it's, it takes a lot of inputs and effort to try to get these updated and make them, make them a good product for you. Um, but you can see net migration is that gray area again, and we think that that's gonna be a pretty significant driver in our growth moving forward because we're gonna have the aging of the population. If you think about how old you'll be in 2060, um, that might be an impact on the population, like if you're leaving the population. Um, I know if I'm, if I'm around, I'm gonna be like pretty, pretty excited and sitting comfortably in a chair. Um, we're, we're having fewer kids, so that natural increase line kind of ticking down, but overall we anticipate continued growth, but more moderated like we've seen in recent years um, in those Census Bureau estimates. So what that looks like overall is an increase of around 2.1 million newtons in 40 years. And I am not a gambler, but this kind of feels like a gambling kind of thing. We're doing the best we can with the inputs we can with the latest data that we have, but we don't know what's gonna happen in 40 years. I feel like 2020 really proved to us like we have no idea what's gonna happen. So, you know, this picture could change um, and it will change when we redo these. We're actually gonna redo them um, for 2025 and my, my technical analyst is really, really excited that he's gonna be just inundated with this work. But, um, so get excited coming out 2025, mark your calendar. Um, it will change a little bit, but we anticipate continued growth. We don't think we're gonna hit some kind of um, population apocalypse. I think I've read an article about a community that was losing population and they were calling it the demographic winter. I don't think we're hitting demographic winter. Um, in the foreseeable future in Utah. Fingers crossed, who knows. Um, looking at the county, you can see, we think Utah County is gonna be the driver of the people side of things. Um, the, the brightest red on the map um, is, is Utah County being a pretty significant factor, a lot more moderated growth in Salt Lake County over that 40 year period. Um, we still think in our model, at least for this round, um, that more jobs would be in Salt Lake County compared to Utah County. Part of that is household size. So if people in Utah County have a little bit bigger household size, even if that goes down over time, you're gonna have more kids and that's gonna be a little different picture. Um, if you wanna get into the whole school age population, we can talk about that too. Um, and we ex anticipate that racial and ethnic um, diversity is gonna continue to grow into the future. This is something we really want to update. These are actually based on our 2017 projections, and we have been waiting for this file from the Census Bureau that still is not out um, because of COVID delays. So the picture probably won't change too much, but the actual values, we're, we're excited to revisit this. Um, we actually kind of undershot um, the 2020 population in this projection from what we saw, we've seen in the recent data. 
And then here's our population pyramid. <laughs> um, so this is showing the male population in the gray and the female population in the red. And the darker shade is the 2020 population. The outlines are what we think it's going to look like in 2060. And each bar represents a year um, of kid or adult or um, adult, kid or adult. So you can see if the fatter bottom means more kids, but you can already see the impact of those decreasing births since 2009. So you have that little narrower bottom. We used to be a lot more fully Christmas tree instead of a, I don't know different kinds of trees, but in, not the shaped bottom uh, Christmas tree. We're a lot more kind of fanning out if you look back to 1990. And then you can see that uh, working age population in the middle, we anticipate that to continue to be a strong part of our population. But then you can see up at the top um, in the projections, right now, uh, the 2020 population, we don't have a massive um, population over age 65, even though we are ex experiencing that aging of the population. Um, but us millennials um, and Gen Z are gonna start hitting those upper bounds um, in, the, in the 2060 look. So as I mentioned, it's a little bit of a gamble. We're doing the best we can with the data that we have, um, but we don't know. And so these are um, scenarios that we produced um, for the first time last year with different considerations around fertility rates, um, uh, mortality rates, and the economic picture. So if fertility rates increased, um, and we are, for some reason everyone starts having more babies, um, and our mortality gets even better, and people are living even longer and we have a really rosy economic picture, we could add even more people than we thought. Um, but if we have the opposite, if people are having fewer kids, if our mortality rates go the other way, we have more deaths and we have a more muted economic growth, we still anticipate growth. You can see that line is still increasing, but it could be just a lot more muted. So decisions that we make now, um, we were talking earlier about policy decisions in China and they're feeling those ramifications you know, 30 years later, the policy decisions, the decisions the business community makes now make an impact on what our future population looks like, who wants to be here, and who's moving here. So with that, that was a lot of really fast um, spewing information at you. But if you ever have questions about specifically population data, but I can point you to other things if I don't have the right answer, uh, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. We're happy to help. We want to provide the best data we can so that people can make informed decisions. So.